Hello, Beach Boys fans. It's Justin Plunk again, aka Pumpkinhead, and here with my collection of late 70s and early 80s Mike Love goodies. Yes, I went there. I went to my Mike Love solo section of my final record collection. And I just thought I'd do a little brief review over the albums. You don't see these too often, or at least I don't, um, in stores. Uh, I'd like to first start off with uh, Almost Summer. Um, it's the soundtrack to a 1978 film. Uh, as you can see, the title song is by uh, Brian Wilson, Mike Love, and Al Jardine. And if you don't know the song Almost Summer, uh, give it a listen sometime. I'm not sure where you could just find it off hand, like on iTunes, but it's a cool little tune. I'm um, kind of reaching back to the old days. Um, it's kind of like It's a Beautiful Day, which was came out a little bit after this era. Um, reminds me of that, but it is a cool little Brian tune. Um, this is the more of a celebration uh, album and uh, mostly the first side is what I would be concerned with of listening to and we have celebration which is Mike and then a lot of uh, Beach Boys uh, tour backing musicians Charles Lloyd, uh, Ron Altback, um, Dave Robinson I I'm not sure if he was part of the Beach Boys touring crew. I know Mike Kowalski, Ed Carter, and Gary Griffin were. So, here we have the group. And you'll recognize uh, Charles Lloyd. Very great saxophone player, great flute player. Uh, he played the solo on Field Flows from the Surf's Up album. Um, Ron Outback was in... Uh, Oh, that one band that did uh, Dancing on Neither Way. Uh, I think I totally screwed up that title. I can't even think of what it is now that I'm recording. Uh, someone post that as a comment, and I will give you a thumbs up. Anyway, side one, you have Almost Summer, which I already uh, discussed. There's a couple of different versions out there. Um... Some that are from radio stations, like specifically custom made for them. Um, we have Sad Sad Summer, which is just a mic song. It's a little somber, down tune. Really good, though. Cruising, another mic song, kind of getting that uh, old 60s feeling, um, which he so loved to put in song. Here, Looking Good is by uh, Ron Albeck. And I was going to point out... Um, if you have this soundtrack, give that a listen, and then come over to MIU and give the She's Got Rhythm uh, track. And you'll notice a lot of uh, similarities. And as Looking Good is an instrumental by Ron Outback, uh, She's Got Rhythm is... Uh, by Mike, Brian, and Ron Altback. Altback. I don't know if I'm saying that right. So, that's why the MIU album's hanging out here. Um, good little tune. We have, uh, Summer in the City, which, uh, uh, Dave Robinson sings lead on, as well as It's Okay, he sings lead on that, which is a different version, and it's not too bad. Um... So the rest, side two, is not Celebration at all. That song, Island Girl, is not the one from Still Cruising. It's by Charles Lloyd. If you're interested in that, I'm sure uh, they would love for you to listen to side two, but I actually never do. So there's the cast from the uh, film. Um, some different credits they're given. This was partially recorded at the Maharishi International University, uh, which is MIU. Uh, some of the known uh, uh, credits here to some Beach Boys uh, helpers from out the years. Uh, Wally Heater, Hyder, whichever that is. Steve Moffat, 
uh, Chuck Britz, um, of course Gary Griffin, and we have Ed Tuela, I'm not sure how that's pronounced. Steve Douglas plays the sax solos on Cruising in Almost Summer. Uh, let's see here. Looks like Stephanie, Maureen, and Margie Love do background vocals on Sad Sad Summer. Um, I'm not sure who Stephanie and Margie are. I know Maureen is his uh, sister who plays the harp, which she is credited for on there. And she played harp on Catch a Wave back in the day. So there's that. And let me pull out the record itself so you can see. Uh, here we go. Side one. There you go, nice clear shot. So, and then I have, uh, I have the single here um, of Almost Summer. So, you that was not a good sound. I did not like that at all. So you have Celebration featuring Mike Love and Almost Summer on MCA Records, which was also on the soundtrack. Oh, and we have a little Mike Love through there. How sweet is that? Not really. Anyway, looking good was the B-side uh, celebration featuring Charles Lloyd. So there we go for that. And then <clears throat> the celebration album itself uh, was more of a collection of I guess you would say kind of random, some random Beach Boy stuff, some random Mike Love stuff. Um, we have, there's, uh, that's Ron Outback there with the mustache. Um, then we have Charles Lloyd there. Uh, he's kind of hidden throughout. That's uh, Paul Far Farso, I'm not sure. I've not really seen that guy in anything. Kind of looks like the judge from Night Court. Um, and then this is, uh, Dave Robinson, I believe. So, uh, right here I'd like to point out we have, it looks like Jan and Dean here with Brian. Uh, this came out in 78 or 79. Um, and I believe Dean here. And here we have the USC Cheerleaders with Brian. Um, what is that? Charles Lloyd. Carl, Ron Outback, and Mike. Um, pleasant picture there. And let's see, on the back here we have some more choice pictures. Um, and song-wise, we have a cover of the Smiley song, Getting Hungry. It's kind of a uh, reggae kind of song or version of it. It's kind of odd. Uh, Sailor, Love Struck, not really anything shockingly great. She's Just Out to Get You, I believe, was with Mike and Diane Rovell, maybe? Uh, I'm not sure. I Don't Want to Know was from Mike's first love album, I think. Uh, Go and Get That Girl, of course, was uh, on a bootleg originally that had... Uh, it was on the Beach Boys Christmas uh, late 70s album that turned into M.I.U., Go and get that girl. Had a Carl vocal, I believe. Now it's got a uh, Dave Robinson lead vocal. How's about a little bit? Is that one song that I think the guys also tried doing on MIU? The How's about? How's about? How's about a little bit of your sweet love? Um, in Country Pie, uh, some others will know that from some of. Uh, Late concerts from the late 70s. Uh, Mike loved to perform that. So there's the back of that. And we have, oh no, Looking Back with Love. Yeah, I've got it. Actually, I really truly love this album. Um, it kind of gets a lot of flack over the years. I kind of understand. It's got some good covers in it, though. It's got some not so great covers in it. Um,. The only song written by Mike is Paradise Found. It's a really good song. Um, this was put out by Boardwalk uh, Records. And um, 
Looking back with love, it does sound like a Mike song, but it's actually not. Um, a lot of people think, oh, come on, Mike, really? Good Vibrations, Assassinations. That's, yeah, that's tasteless. There's a uh, second side there. And here is side one. But yeah, Mike did not. As I was saying, Looking Back With Love is not a Mike Love written lyric. Uh, though some may think that. Um, it's, it's cheese all the way. And it's actually not written by Mike. And continuing on with part two, I was uh, going over the track listing of Looking Back With Love. Here's side two. And we have Calendar Girl, which was a song that was recorded in the late 70s by the Beach Boys for possibly the Light album. And it was not used. And now we have a version of by Mike here. Um, here's Brian's favorite song, track two, uh, Be My Baby. Why Mike's doing it, it's kind of odd. Uh, I had always heard this was a Brian Wilson production. Um, I'm not really sure uh, if it still is. Um, but I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, track 3, One Good Reason, is actually my favorite uh, song on this album. Uh, it's the B-side to the Looking Back With Love single. And uh, then there's Teach Me To Die and Paradise Found, which I said earlier, uh, Paradise Found being the only Mike Love written song here. And this came out in 1981, of course. And there we go again. We have the lovely Mike Love in his uh, Dodgers hat. And uh, kind of odd. He really has not came out with anything since this as, as a solo artist. This is the insert. And here we have... Uh, the credits um, and I don't think they're all this not the same as the celebration ones but one would think it would be the same people that worked on it I'm not I knew no I do know that uh, Kurt uh, Becker I, I, I'm not sure if that's really how you pronounce his name. I've seen it spelled other ways. Botcher, Betcher. Um, I know that he uh, helped produce this. Um, but I don't recognize as many uh, credits on here. Tommy Morgan, of course, played harmonica on uh, the old uh, days with Brian with the Wrecking Crew. And it looks like uh, we have uh, thank you to Bruce Johnston and um, a few others. I don't really uh, recognize any of those. Uh, Tom Hewitt, which is uh, Beach Boys manager. Um, I'm not sure if he was at this time or not, but I know he was in the 80s. Extra special thanks to Kathy Martinez. For a love, support, inspiration, especially on the romantic songs. Ooh. Yeah, so. I'm not sure why Bruce was the only one to get a special thanks here. Um, I do see up here that he did do some arrange, extra arrangements um, on Looking Back With Love. I don't know if it's just the song or not. Or the whole album. Well, let's move on to uh, 1983. We have uh, Mike Love and Dean Torrance got together. And, uh, of course, uh, for you history buffs, you'll know that uh, during this time, the Beach Boys were not the most functional group. 
Um, Carl, Carl had been doing his solo outings. Um, I think that was like 81 or 82. So, uh, you know, a small group. The guys hadn't had any ma new material since Keeping the Summer Alive. Um, I know Carl left for a while because the guys weren't doing anything creative and they had done, uh, just hadn't rehearsed like, like they did in the old days and just really, I'm sure felt like a jukebox, jukebox band. Excuse me. So we have Mike here, uh, getting involved with, uh, Dean Torrance and this was put out through, uh, Radio Shack. And I have a poster. I can't remember where I placed it, but it's a promo poster for this, and it had a cassette on it. Um, it's kind of odd. The front of this kind of looks like the back. You've got the track numbers here, or what's on here and everything. But if you look at the back, that kind of looks like a cover, too. Though both, si both sides, if they're a cover, yeah, both of them are terrible. Um, there's just really dated. Um, so anyway, I have special guests with Paul Revere and the Raiders, uh, the Rip Chords, of course, with Bruce Johnson and Terry Melcher and the association association. So Mike and Dean do the first song, uh, lightning strikes. Of course, Dean Torrance is, uh, Dean of Jan and Dean, if you didn't know that. But if you're watching this, you probably know your stuff, I would say. Anyway, Lightning Strikes, a uh, pretty good song. Uh, this is, all this stuff is very 80s sounding. So, uh, but I do enjoy it. Um, Walk Away Renee, performed by the association, still very 80s. Uh, the Letter, Just Mike Love there. Um, it's kind of odd, I was you know, I was thinking about the letter. The only time the Beach Boys did it was at the Hawaii concert in 67. Um, and the the track for that got released on the Rarities album from 1981, I believe. So perhaps maybe Brian, or Brian, perhaps Mike heard that and said, Hey, uh, that's not too good of a version. Maybe I'll do one and whatever. So maybe that's the reason why. Then you have uh, Mike doing his nasal rendition of Locomotion. Locomotion. Um, it's pretty good. It's alright. Uh, then Sealed with a Kiss with the Rip Chords. So. Uh, excuse me. So, real quick as we're discussing sides. So. Uh, excuse me. So, real quick as we're discussing sides, we have the rip cords. There's Bruce and Terry. And we have this little dog for some reason that's signed by everybody. Um, I, I guess that's what it's supposed to look like. You have Mike and Dean written on the tail, the leg, Michael Huff, Dean Torrance, Rock and Roll, Paul Revere, the Association. Rip cords. Wonder how much this dog is worth. Wonder if Mike Love still cuddles with that every night to when he goes to sleep. Eleven hits you've heard over and over. They'll sound even better when you rock and roll again with Mike and Dean. Of course, there's Mike and Dean. Actual size of Mike Love's head, ego-wise. There's. The association on the left and Paul Revere and the Raiders on the right. And we've grown up a bit since the 60s. So, there we have Side 2, Sugar Shack by Mike Love. I actually really like this version. Um, it's kind of funny. Uh, the end of it has uh, Mike doing his bass vocals of um, Short and Bread and he says uh, or the the end of Sugar Sacks scenes Mama 
Uh, Mama's little baby loves Sugar Shack. Mama's little baby loves Sugar Shack. You can find that on YouTube or something. You get listen to that. It's kind of funny. Uh, kind of cool that he references uh, Schwartz Bread, something that Brian Wilson loves to do on all of his records. Um, so that was Sugar Shack. Over in the Raiders, 96 Tears. Uh, typical cover, nothing great. Baby Talk, which was a Jan and Dean song, not bad. Wild Thing by Dean, uh, still okay. The Do Run Run with Mike. Again, uh, The Do Run Run was uh, kind of uh, proposed for the early 80s. I don't know if it was proposed for uh, keeping the summer alive or not, but I know um, Made in Summer made in summer made in california uh put out there the beach boys cover of the do run run and it's uh carl's in lead um again maybe mike heard that and or remembers them singing that and thinking hey mike love could do that he could do an awesome version so i don't know just you know something that may have ran through his head um then her boyfriend's back by Mike and Dean. So uh, another pretty stellar uh, cover. And uh, of course, we're not talking about this cover being stellar. But anyway, um, hope you enjoyed the uh, coverage of uh, the Mike Love solo album, uh, solo years, and side projects. Um, I, uh, if you ever get a chance to find the, if you ever find these at a record store or something or have a chance to buy them, I would totally buy it. Like, that's, that's a lot to say that, but it's pretty good, pretty good albums. Uh, the Celebration stuff. I know the second, there's a second Celebration album called Disco Celebration. All I remember it having is a disco version of California Girls. And first love from Mike Love's first love album, um, which was his first solo album he tried out but didn't succeed. Uh, but I don't think that was an official record that was actually sold. I feel like it was given out at concerts, but I'm not really 100% on that. Um, anyway, uh, speaking of first love and country love, uh, those two are on bootleg. Um, First Love was, was the first album that he tried as a solo artist. Um, it's okay. It's got like Sumahama on it. I think it was recorded around 78. Um, so it was like pre-light album, L.A. Uh, Sumahama. Uh, Brian's Back. Uh, of course, First Love. I, I really like that tune, actually. Um, hmm. What else was on there? I cannot think. Viggy? Yeah, that's not a good one. Yeah, sorry, Mike. That's not too great. I haven't listened to that in a while, so I can't really... I can't remember what else is on. I think I Don't Want to Know is on there as well, which was on the Celebration album. Um, and ironically, like, I Don't Want to Know was like a mic tune that he sang lead on First Love, I believe. And then he put on Celebration. Dave Robinson sang the lead on that. I feel like I Don't Want to Know was also re-recorded for Unleash the Love. Early 2000s maybe? Mid 2000s? And I want to say Christian Love, uh, Mike's son, did the vocals for that. I am not 100% sure. I've not listened to Unleash the Love in a long time either. Um, it's a pretty good album too. Uh it's got a cool head, warm heart on it, and uh, Brian's back, another version of that. Then he tried doing Country Love, which is, when I was told about it, and when I've read about it, it's got zero stars out of five, and people were like, ah, that's terrible, and, and it just, I don't know, it's... A lot of people give it a lot of crap over the years. And I thought, you know, I'm a Beach Boys fan. 
I've sat through all the sessions of SOT and bootlegs and whatever, you know, on CD. I can sit through Country Love, I'm sure. But it's it's actually hard for me to sit through it and not hit the skip button on a couple. Uh, it's just, it's not very Beach Boys-esque, you know. I thought to myself, uh, this is like the difference Sweet Insanity is to like Brian Wilson 88. Um, Sweet Insanity is kind of hard to listen to, but it's not quite as challenging.